The Spider-Man Far From Home trailer is about to play, but if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame yet, stop watching because there's some serious spoilers about to come up. But if you have seen Avengers Endgame, enjoy the trailer. Everywhere I go, I see his face. I just really miss him. Yeah, I miss him too. I don't think Tony would have done what he did if he didn't know that you were gonna be here after he was gone. You gonna be the next Iron Man now? Well, no, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your jobs. Oh. What? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Look, keep up the good work because I am going on vacation. Heads up, Nick Fury's calling you. I don't really want to talk to Nick Answer Fury. Answer the phone. Why? Because if you don't talk to him, then I have to talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? I gotta go. You do not ghost Nick Fury. What up, dorks? What's up? We're just talking about the trip. I'm here in St. Marco Polo's. Oh, I think MJ really likes me. That reminds me when I first fell in love. You're a very difficult person to contact, Spider-Man. This is Mr. Beck. We could have used someone like you on my world. New world? Beck is from Earth, just not ours. The snap to our hole in our dimension. You're saying there's a multiverse? We have a job to do, and you're coming with us. There's got to be someone else you can use. What about Thor? Off-world. Captain Marvel. Unavailable. But I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Bitch, please, you've been to space. What do you want, Peter? I want to go back on my trip with the girl who I really like and tell her how I feel. MJ, I am Spider-Man. No, of course I'm not. I mean, it's kind of obvious. You're right, you may not be ready, but this is my responsibility. Saving the world requires sacrifice. Sometimes people die. I always feel like I'm putting my friends in danger. The world needs the next Iron Man. Are you going to step up or not? I gotta get you guys out of here! Get on the jet! Who are you? I work with Spider-Man. You work for Spider-Man? I work with Spider-Man, not for Spider-Man. New plan! Hi everyone, it's Charlie. We got a brand new Spider-Man Far From Home trailer to break down. And obviously they give you a big spoiler warning at the beginning of that. If you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, big spoilers because they talk all about Iron Man and what's going on during it. So obviously they tease a lot of big stuff during this. They try to say Mysterio is from the multiverse. I'm from another Earth. The snap tore a hole in the fabric of our dimension, just allowing me in all these elementals, quote unquote, to break through. So we got a whole bunch of Easter eggs to break down here. Yes, I do think that Mysterio is pulling a fast one on Nick Fury, trying to make everyone think that he's from another Earth. But I will talk about some of the possibilities that Sony is trying to spin in the background here because they definitely want Tom Holland's Spider-Man in their Venom and other Spider-Verse movies that they're making. So I would not be surprised if they are trying to build multiverse out of this so that someday they could eventually build to a live action Spider-Verse movie like we saw the animated Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. But if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos. We do Easter eggs every week. Obviously, it's only going to get crazier as we get ready for Spider-Man Far From Home. We have Comic-Con coming up this summer, and we're going to get the official Marvel Phase 4 movie schedule after Spider-Man Far From Home hits theaters. We'll do a new round of the Infinity Gauntlet giveaway, too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Spider-Man comment on the video. But you open the trailer with Spider-Man in the Iron Spider suit after the events of Avengers Endgame patrolling New York City just doing his normal friendly neighborhood Spider-Man thing. Last year, Amy Pascal said that the movie picks up minutes after the end of Avengers Endgame, but I actually now think that she's talking about the Avengers Endgame sort of end credit scene where Spider-Man meets Ned Leeds post-snap, like everyone is back, oh my god, I can't believe it. What happened? They're trying to deal with it. Kevin Feige and the Russos also confirmed the timeline, so like all of his classmates here, this is 2023, it's five years later, some of his classmates from Spider-Man Homecoming did not get snapped, they're now five years older, they're probably in college, or they've gone on to have jobs but even though they don't address that during the trailer there'll probably be a minute at the beginning of the film where they have somebody reference that because you do see them in class talking about their trip that they're getting ready to go on so obviously they're going to have a couple scenes with them at school 
But because the end of Endgame takes place in the spring, maybe there's just like a quick montage that takes place that pushes them into the beginning of summer, like it's the last couple of weeks of school at the end of Avengers Endgame. Because they all go back, they meet each other, it's probably just a little time jump before you see them all board the plane and head to Venice. You see him talking to Happy about missing Iron Man, literally and figuratively, seeing his face everywhere. His eyes are all red, so it looks like he definitely needs a vacation. He's probably been pulling double time since he came back just to make up for lost time because he didn't really know what had happened when he first came back from the snap. Doctor Strange explained it to him, but there's this whole thread in the trailer about him being Iron Man's replacement now. Like the cops tell him, wait, you're going to be both Iron Man and Spider-Man now because he's wearing the Iron Spider suit? Even Nick Fury tells him he's going to step up. Happy says, I don't think that Iron Man would have done what he did if he didn't think you'd be around to pick up the slack when he was gone. So a lot of the early part of the movie is just him dealing with everyone's expectations for him because even though it's been five years and technically they're five years older, he's still 16, 17 years old. So he still feels like a high school kid. So he's still trying to reconcile all these big things that are going on while also still being a high school kid trying to deal with high school problems. Like I'm just trying to tell the girl that I like that I like her. During the scene with the cops, one of them is named Bristow. That's actually a character from the New Mutants comic books, which is an X-Men title. He became obsessed with Kitty Pryde's dance teacher. He didn't have powers and he wasn't a mutant. But I know a lot of you are wondering how they're going to start invoking X-Men, Fantastic Four stuff. I'm not expecting any big X-Men characters or anything like that to pop up during this movie. But don't be surprised if you start seeing little Easter eggs and references in people's names and street signs and license plates. Like there are a lot of license plate Easter eggs for Sinister Six characters when they're fighting the big quote unquote elemental creatures during this trailer. They have the funny joke about nobody wanting to talk to Nick Fury. Happy's like, I'm not talking to him. Wait a minute, did you just send him to voicemail? You can't do that. Spider-Man trying to duck out so that he can go have fun with his friends. The poster behind Happy, Crusher vs. Hogan, is an Easter egg for Crusher Creel, which is the person that Matt Murdock's father fought in the ring during Daredevil. That's also from the Daredevil comics as well. I know Crusher Creel was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but they're kind of doing something different with that character. The comic book Crusher Creel did fight Matt Murdock's father. We get extended versions of some of the scenes that we saw from the last trailer with them just smiling at each other. Peter being positive that MJ likes him a little bit while Flash Thompson's getting hit in the nuts elsewhere being a douchey tourist. There's a funny line from Ned Leeds about remembering the first time he fell in love because apparently during the course of the movie he's going out with Betty Brant which is a bit of a comic book easter egg because adult comic book Betty Brant was with adult Ned Leeds when it was found out that he was the Hobgoblin. It was part of that whole saga even though I don't expect this version of Ned Leeds to ever become a version of Hobgoblin. There's a little bit of new dialogue from Nick Fury. You're a hard man to get a hold of, Spider-Man. He takes him to the Venice Canals to what we now know is a secret S.H.I.E.L.D. base with Maria Hill and introduces him to the Quentin Beck Mysterio, who apparently says that he's from an alternate Earth. We could really use someone like you on my Earth. Wait a minute, there's a multiverse and Spider-Man's brain sort of exploding as he tries to take it all in and he's buying it hook, line, and sinker. So here's where we get to the Mysterio plot of it all. Obviously, we've heard what they've said about the character before this. Like they said, oh, Mysterio is going to be a hero during this movie. But the new stuff is all this multiverse explainer they're trying to throw at us. Per Mysterio, the snap tore a hole in our dimension, allowing all these elemental creatures in Mysterio to come through. So he's chased them to our Earth to help us clean this up. My guess is, is that Nick Fury doesn't totally believe him, and that's why he's got Spider-Man double-timing, trying to find out what's really going on, follow him around. But when he first pulls Spider-Man in for duty here, it seems like he totally buys it, but then Spider-Man through the course of the film will probably figure out what Mysterio is really doing. They have the funny moment where he's like, I'm on vacation. Isn't there somebody else you could get? What about Thor? He's off world. What about Captain Marvel, that new hero that I gave the Infinity Gauntlet to at the end of Avengers Endgame? She's unavailable too. Obviously, Nick Fury uses the word dimension, which will remind you of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which was inspiration for comic book Spider-Verse, which then inspired the Spider-Verse movies. There are a lot of people that think that even though Mysterio might be lying about being from the multiverse and just using that as a cover to try to explain why he's trying to make himself look like a hero, and really these are other Sinister Six characters like Molten Man, Hydro Man, Sandman, that long term, Sony's plan is to build a Spider-Verse in the movies, do live action stuff, and as a way to explain how they can put Tom Holland's Spider-Man in one of their Venom-verse movies. It would definitely be an easy backdoor, even though I still think that this version of Mysterio is lying like comic book Mysterio was because Kevin Feige's MCU movies tend to be pretty faithful with character origins, even though a lot of times they'll change comic book storylines a little bit. 
This just seems like they're using the events of Avengers Infinity War, The Snap, and Avengers Endgame and Iron Man's death to do the original Mysterio origin story from the comics where he debuted trying to make himself look like a hero by throwing Spider-Man under the bus, only in this case he just saying that the snap tore a hole in the dimension there's all these elemental creatures and that's what his plan is. And the new thing that they've said about his character, because you see that scene of them talking to each other commiserating while he's wearing his new stealth suit and Mysterio's got some of his armor taken off, that the producers, the writers called Iron Man sort of like the cool dad to Spider-Man and now they're calling Mysterio the cool uncle to Spider-Man as a mentor type figure. Obviously though, he's a comic book villain. So there's a very quote unquote sinister bent to this to make as many Spider-Man puns as possible. There's a scene of MJ watching Molten Man forming. Nearby Spider-Man swings in wearing his black stealth suit. This might be part of the prog bite because then we see all this carnival stuff going on in the background. Mysterio flies in, tries to help him. You see Spider-Man try to run away and jump over this giant explosion as the Molten Man creature starts to chase after him. There's a scene of Mysterio in broad daylight flying past the shard, which also doubles as one of Nick Fury's bases. Apparently, this is in London, so Mysterio's text seems pretty advanced. That's pretty accurate to the comics. Quentin Beck in the comics was a special effects wizard in Hollywood, so he used a lot of mechanical creations to fight against Spider-Man or just make himself look like more of a hero. Like one of the first times Spider-Man fought Mysterio, Mysterio created a bunch of fake X-Men using robots, making Spider-Man fight them. More footage from the Mysterio Hydro Man fight while Mysterio's talking to Spider Man in that bar in Venice about a separate scene. What do you want in life, Spider Man? I want to tell the girl that I like that I like her. Then they have the funny scene of Peter maybe trying to tell her that he likes her, how he feels about her, but her swerving on him, coming right out saying he's Spider Man. Oh, it's pretty obvious that you're Spider Man. I'm actually happy that they're doing it this way because they're trying to set up the MJ character in this movie as a really smart person. Of course, she would probably figure out that Peter is Spider-Man because at this point in his career, as badass as he is, he's totally bad at the cloak and dagger secret keeping aspect of everything. There's a much larger version of Molten Man in a way longer version of the bridge fight scene at the Tower Bridge of London from the last big trailer. Mysterio flying into action while Spider-Man's tour group runs to safety. The scene that happens right after this is probably the funny, happy scene that they tag at the end. Okay, we all have to get on the jet. Everybody, big plan. I work with Spider-Man. Flash Thompson freaking out. Wait a minute, you work for Spider-Man? And he's filming it on his camera to post on social media and Happy just trying to explain to him what his relationship with Spider-Man is. More footage of Mysterio explaining how serious the mission is, how this is his responsibility to see it to the end, talking about saving the world, how it requires sacrifice, riffing on Iron Man's legacy, saving the universe with the Infinity Gauntlet, the Avengers during Endgame. Sometimes people die. Maybe this is actually when Spider-Man opens up to him about his grief at losing Iron Man, worrying about putting his friends in danger because of his secret identity. Like I said, before Spider-Man probably figures out that Mysterio has been lying to him this whole time, he's sort of the cool uncle mentor type person to Spider-Man. There's a separate scene of Spider-Man playing with Iron Man's trademark glasses. These are the ones that you saw him wearing during Infinity War, then again during Avengers Endgame. They were made out of nanotech during that. I don't know if this is a separate dedicated pair or if it's also nanotech like the ones that Iron Man used. But you see him in the back of Iron Man's jet from earlier in the trailer with that special new gauntlet tech on and it looks like something that Iron Man made for him. Maybe that has something to do with the new versions of his spider suits that he wears during the trailer like the black stealth suit and then the newer black and red suit. There's more devastation from the Sandman fight we saw Nick Fury, Maria Hill involved in. Spider-Man says the world needs the next Iron Man and they're sort of trying to juxtapose all the stuff that Mysterio is doing and all the stuff that Spider-Man is doing and him seeing Iron Man's face all over the place like he looks at the little shrine of Iron Man with the candles all around it. It also reminds you of that funny scene from the last trailer where his tour group is looking at the news footage of Mysterio fighting saying he looks like Iron Man and Thor rolled into one. So I think part of the idea is is that Spider-Man sees this and is like oh wow this Mysterio guy he can pick up the mantle and take all this responsibility so I won't have to worry about it that much. I can just still be friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But as we're all probably expecting maybe there's a big Mysterio swerve during all this he's lying about it. Spider-Man will have to take him down and end up stepping up the way that Happy is telling him and Nick Fury. Like Nick Fury literally tells him during the trailer, it's time for you to step up. 
So everybody, let me know in the comments, do you think that Mysterio is lying about being from an alternate Earth and using the Snap and the Multiverse and Avengers Endgame to try and pass himself off as a hero with these elemental creatures that also might be Sinister Six characters because of all the toys they're selling? Like, they're literally calling this guy Molten Man. They're literally calling this guy Hydro Man. So it does seem like they're backdoor including Sinister Six characters. There are more Avengers Endgame, Marvel Phase 4, and Spider-Man videos that I have planned for later this week, but leave all your questions in the comments below and I'll try to address those during those videos. I'll name a new giveaway winner when I post new Marvel, but my next video will be that Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 5 trailer video, so look out for that later today. While you wait for everything, click here for my Avengers Endgame Easter Eggs video and click here for my Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 4 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.